Association have yielding an impressive body of work including over 527 reputed journal publications, constant proceedings, books, book chapters and papers. Please join me in welcoming Professor Anne Ferguson whose expertise and leadership has been... The speaker cannot hear and the moderator should repeat the question. I think that we did. Next speaker of the session is... The next, the next speaker of this session will be Professor Dr. Ian Ferguson. He is Professor and Dean Southern Polytechnical College of Engineering and Engineering Technology, uh, Kennesaw State University, Georgia, USA. He is going to speak on a very interesting topic. The title of his today's keynote lecture is Alternating substrate technologies for three nitride LEDs. So I let's welcome Professor Dr. Ian Ferguson for his keynote lecture to this session. Thank you. We have, uh, and we're really looking at the issue of different substrate technologies for LEDs. So light emitting diodes and LEDs have really become an important part of our lighting technology LED structure. So this is really the important slide to, to look at. Why are we interested in gallium nitride and gallium nitride LEDs? One, that you take gallium nitride, if you add some indium into it, it gives you the ability to build shooting the wavelength of the emission from these devices into the, into the visible. Um, into the visible. People have primarily used um, Indian gallium nitride by adding Indian into the sample to be able to bring you into the visible region. Um, the LED structure typically is pumping some type of phosphor. So people want devices that it's like a solid state, um, it's like a solid state equivalent of a fluorescent tube. So we produce high energy, and uh, we produce high energy and um, uh, photons, which then pump the phosphor as well to give us the red emission that allows us to have a, a device that gives us white light. The core issue here is that most of the other technologies that people have used, both in terms of um, silicon carbide and some applications in sapphire are highly mismatched to this gallium nitride layer. In addition, you can see what we say copside with a um, certain composition of about 18% gallium. We can actually mismatch this directly onto the gallium nitride. The other thing that one can actually see is that the thermal expansion coefficients will the, the difference in the thermal expansion coefficient between the between the gallium nitride and the and the zinc oxide is, is minimal, so it means that as you grow on these samples, and often the gallium nitride are having to grow up about 1,000 degrees centigrade or so, so it's up in this region here to get good quality material. Um, there's no significant difference in the expansion coefficients of the material, so when you grow the material and cool it down, um, the layers don't tend to be either buckle or or the lifts or the layer doesn't tend to um, or the layer doesn't tend to crack. So it's a number of issues to address to produce these um, to produce these layers. So why 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 zinc oxide? Um, the zinc oxide you can actually grow by a number of techniques where you can produce the zinc oxide at high quality and relatively cheaply. And also the, the edge density, so the density and dislocations in the material um, is actually relatively low. And when you grow, if I go back, when you grow gallium nitride onto zinc oxide, it's large mass mismatch and thermal mismatch means that the, the average densities in this gallium nitride layer are about 10 to the 10 centimeters square, so this is a narrow density. You can see with the zinc oxide, then uh, our area of density of uh, potential defects is low even before we, before we start growing in these, um, before we start growing these layers. 
people have grown onto uh, onto Darwin knife knives, and this is a different technique. It's not the technique that people use for growing these uh, for growing these letters commercially. It's called this is called molecular dimethotaxy. And um, this is shown as Sims data. And um, we're achieving that very rapidly low temperatures. And um, part of the issue is between the gallium nitride layers, which is gallium and nitrogen, and the zinc oxide, that you actually get the formation of other phases. So it's gallium oxide and zinc oxide. This gallium oxide people are interested in for um, other applications because the white band gap is about 4.3 or so. Um, but this interdiffusion is problematic because if you form a different phase between these layers or you get into the fusion, you no longer have a sharp layer between the two layers in there. And these properties of both the mismatch between the two layers and the thermal accommodation can be um, can then actually um, um, will not work in the way that one would expect. Secondly, when you grow these um, materials and zinc oxide and um, it's essentially non-central symmetric so when you so when you take out wafer like this one side of this um, wafer will primarily be zinc and um, will be zinc terminated and the other side will be oxygen terminated so when you take this wafer depending on what side you um, put up the the um, surface can look inherently um, different during growth. So this is, this is well known in this area. Typically what you would want to do is to grow on the, on the oxygen and base space. And that oxygen base space, space tends to show um, better um, and smoother growth. And this is also for gallium nitride. If you take a gallium nitride wafer or layer, which are very expensive to purchase, you want to grow the, the nitrogen terminated on the nitrogen terminated phase. So, also understanding the phase you can grow on is important. Um, this layer, um, this layer here was growing using, um, um, was growing using, um, I think again, MBE. I can't see the top of my, unfortunately, I can't see the top of my slides here. Where people actually growing with the gallium nitride and with the and with the Indian and with the Indian gallium nitride on top of the on top of the layer, and this is actually by first layer of deposition. So this is a this is a slightly different um, technique to others. But the thing to pull out of this is that although you get very nice. X-ray, and you'll see similar data um, to what we produce. And um, this is at very low temperature, so these layers inherently are, are, are have low, have been um, very and um, will, 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 will not necessarily be layers that will produce good and um, that will produce good mirrors. You can skip this um, one, which again the issue is even here. With this particular technique, if you grow the temperature, we increase the temperature, and um, they're also seeing this form of these interfacial layers. And this is formation of these interfacial layers that become problematic in trying to grow these layers on this oxide. There are some other uh, there are some other issues which I will um, which I'll come back to in a few moments. There has been some MCVD growth on these layers in the past, but you can see that these layers compared to the growth on the aluminum oxide, and this is the X-ray uh, line width, is about, the X-ray line width is about an order of magnitude larger. So it essentially means that these layers are highly, are actually highly defective. So the, what the literature has shown here is that one, it's difficult to grow in these materials, and the material quality is that people have actually um, reported to date um, on the material qualities that people have reported to date are certainly not um, suitable for growing devices. So I need to 
that will be going to go out for something in my group. see something in the chat, so I'm just going to check about something else. Okay, got it. I was just making sure you could learn. I was just making sure you could hear me properly. So, what was the issues in growing on these, um, on the zinc oxide materials? One, these zinc oxide materials, are, are not family stable. So very often we take a piece of zinc oxide, we heat it up to a very high temperature, it may start decomposing. And so one of the things which is good about zinc oxide is the ability to be able to easily move, easily remove the layer after the grow. The other thing about the thing that makes it problematic in trying to grow on these um, Substrates is a lack of thermal, is a lack of um, is a lack of thermal stability, and there's two other issues, and probably one of the major issues we have when we first start growing on these samples is the fact that hydrogen etches these samples. So typically, if you want to remove the zinc oxide from anything, you can. Um, you can etch it in hydrogen chloride, and it removes the, the zinc oxide and the wet zinc oxide and very effectively. It turns out in MLCBD are carrier gases and the way we're growing the material is actually a lot of hydrogen in the layers. So when we first started to try and grow on these layers, the students and the people who put the who put the layer in the um, in the reactor they would heat it up to temperature, and by the time they came to grow, there was no substrate left. So essentially, they had etched away the um, they etched away the they etched away the material. And this is showing this figure here is just showing how the substrate, even at relatively low temperatures, etched up. So, so part of what we're really then looking at doing is how do you want keep the substrate firmly stable and to grow on it and how do you essentially put a lot of hydrogen in the um, system to stop the action back on the, uh, on the on the substrate. It turns out that the the issue isn't just the carrier gases that we use in the in the growth. There's a lot of hydrogen that we put into the reactor. Hydrogen actually cleans up the the system cleans up the layers during the growth. So we can actually remove that and we can actually remove that and move over to a nitrogen based um, system. But it actually turns out that the that the ammonia as well that we use for the nitrogen for the gallium nitride when it decomposes as well also produces um, enough hydrogen that it can actually at slightly higher temperatures also cause the uh, the substrate to edge back. So so the problem is that you have this inherently unstable system to grow on and what we're interested on is really is what's the quality of that top layer before we grow the gallon nitride on on top of the layer. One of the things that we could look at doing is how to remove the ammonia. So what we have with these sources and this um, um, dimethyl hydrazine and the 5 butyl hydrazine is a, is a chemical where in essence we've removed a lot of the um, hydrogen in the system and we've gone to something that's actually more, um, that's more um, nitrogen based as well. The issue we had is that if we actually use these layers and our growth rate when we switched over went down by at least a factor of uh, 10 and also what we also found was that we did get an actual um, decontaminant we, that we would actually incorporate carbon into those layers which actually made them, uh, made them fairly useless.
So what did we start by doing with some sort of cost generation of the uh, product was to actually try and grow a layer of gallon nitride where this buffer layer was very, where, this, where we grew a buffer layer that was at very low temperature. And what we were trying to do was essentially um, stabilize this interface between the zinc oxide and gallium nitride um, and the gallium nitride buffer. And two things we can see from this. One is, if we look at the X-ray, the zinc oxide layer is, is, is definitely there. Uh, there doesn't appear to be a large amount of any interaction between the layers, but we can also see a gallium nitride layer with a reasonable fill with a half maximum. But the PL um, looks somewhat looks somewhat strange on these uh, on these samples. The other thing is when we actually went and looked at the when we went and looked at the samples, uh, what we were seeing was emission not just from the gallium nitride, but we were seeing emission and um, that was at lower and um, energy than the zinc oxide, um, which is in this region here. We were also seeing emission from the gallium nitride at higher energies. Um, we will explain why that's occurring in a moment. If you actually look at the surface of these samples, they actually had um, cracking. And the other thing is through the cracking, as we actually try to ramp up the temperature, we were actually seeing significant back action from the sample. So what we were doing was it was um, it was potentially cross doping. You don't you didn't only have an issue of um, potential diffusion at interfaces. You also had issues that when these samples would crack, that you get the thermal decomposition. You can see this by the difference in color between the gallium nitride layer and the other and the other layer. So. What we see is, as we increase and we add nitrogen into these layers, um, the band gap of the material can shift to lower temperatures. Um, with some form of incorporation of gallium into the layer, we can also um, shift the band gap towards higher energies. So, so this. A mission that we saw seems to show evidence for both um, seems to show evidence for both um, nitrogen and oxygen diffusion into the layer. But the cracking in these layers was significant. So our next our next process is to work out how do we um, our next um, process is to work out how do we um, how do we remove the we've got some issues here. Okay. How do we remove the cracking from the layer? And we did this by using a multi gallon nitride buffer layer where we actually um, grew one at a very low temperature, then one at a higher temperature. These layers actually work better, so apart from some smaller pinfold, we didn't get cracking. But what we did actually see was some delamination of the layers. That meant there was probably an issue with something to do with uh, was something to do with um, that thermal mismatch due to this interface um, issues. Our observations were kind of interesting. Um, um, were, 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 were interesting that in our reflectivity measurement, we can see a slight dip in the reflectivity. And if we, got, if we had this, we could actually see cracking. So there's a very small window between where we would see some type of cracking in the layer and some type of peeling off. So kind of defined the uh, buffer layer temperature that was uh, in a very defined window. Um, once we solved that, there was no evidence for this um, zinc and oxygen and gallium nitride due to the fusion within the layers. And we tended to see a more pure gallium nitride layer, and also the RMS roughness of the layer and the layer reduced. So, in going through this, the our next approach was to grow and um, was to grow and use a 
and aluminum nitride upper layer tends to have a lower diffusion length on the, on the surface, and, and that seemed to solve the problem of both the, of the cracking and the peeling and in, these, in these layers. So now we could actually see something where we had reasonable x-ray and it could work for half maximum is about the best that anybody had reported. Our PL did actually improve. Uh, did also improve compared to what we had before, so we weren't seeing the same shift in the luminescence that we were seeing that lower energies also disappeared. So that was all um, consistent with that was all consistent with this lack of interdiffusion between the um, between the layers. Um, what we also did was we measured the um, edge pitch densities on the um, on the zinc oxide, so it just told us what type of um, how much depth, how much defects did we have in the layer, and um, and we were seeing defect densities which kind of replicated what we were seeing in the substrate of about ten to the four, and this is about six orders of magnitude, four to six orders of magnitude lower than gallium nitride being grown on other layers. Um, and what you can see from these layers is actually um, this is showing um, blue emission um, from these layers. So this is a number of different samples where we actually um, where we actually um, lit up the where we actually lit up the layer. I have about six minutes past um, to go so what I'm going to do is just cover two other topics <coughs> quickly. You'll see me run through a number of slides. The real benefit of growing on these layers is the ability to be able to grow this gallium indium nitride directly onto the zinc oxide layer and remove them the mismatch between the gallium nitride and these layers. Um, it turned out that what we still had to do was do a very thin, self accommodating um, gallium nitride layer before we do the indium gallium nitride on top. What you actually found is that that would, um, that would accommodate one, it would allow us to stabilize that growth interface between the, um, between the zinc oxide and the indium gallium nitride um, layer. Um, which meant it was easier to accommodate the indium gallium nitride onto the layer. So again, we wanted a composition of about of about twenty percent or so on here. So what this shows here is um, two things. This is our X-ray. So the zinc oxide layer uh, shows indium incorporation between about seventeen percent and about twenty-seven percent. And essentially, we, we, we did this by adjusting the growth temperature. So, when we crossed the growth temperature, the indium gallium nitride, the change of desorption rate of the indium onto the, onto the layer. And we also saw systematic shift in the, in the um, PL. The unfortunate issue is that the, that the luminescence peak and where we thought it would be relative to what the X-ray was telling us was what the X-ray was telling us was the fact that the um, again I should take a drink water um, was telling us that the emission was likely from defects in the in in the layer. So we looked at some temperature luminescence and some other things, and there was still evidence. This is a Sims measurement. There was still evidence for. Um, Strong interfusion between, the, uh, between these layers. The good thing is, and I'm going to roll a deck some slides and come to a few slides at the end, is one, is that when you grow the Indian gallium nitride, it does have a tendency to phase separate. And we did a lot of work which essentially showed that we could suppress the phase separation in these. Um, in these layers, and again, don't have enough time to talk about this. We also looked at how we, um, we looked at this transition layer, and rather than using um, 
gallium nitride, we also look at use of ALD of, um, of um, an aluminum oxide layer, so very, very thin layers of aluminum oxide between the thing. This is another way of trying to stabilize that interface between the zinc oxide and the layer. So this is shown in a simple way. Uh, um, ALD tool, um, use a number of different. So we did a systematic series of work in trying to optimize this layer. We don't need to throw anything out other than that. It does show here that you can't get phase separation if you don't throw correctly. And it's, it's strong, it depends on the, on the thickness of this zinc oxide layer uh, that you use. And we, we went through and optimized these. Uh, we went through and optimized these layers. Uh, and again, this is shown as some of systematic work in trying to look at these different types of interfaces between the two layers. Um, let me just flip through this. I don't have enough time to talk about these things, but we're just looking at more details of how that interface and uh, how that interface works. So, in the last couple of minutes I have, uh, I was going to look, I was just going to talk about these LED structures. So once we were able to stabilize the, the gallium nitride onto the, onto the LED, onto the zinc oxide substrate, what we now did was we set up to grow a series of um, indium gallium nitride LEDs. So this active region here, this is just showing some initial modeling. Try and get a device that was more of a formal junction device, so something where we only do the device leaving down the nitride, where we don't this material of NMP type to do some type of LED and some type of LED structure. And so the modeling allows us to work out what our depletion and um, what our depletion is in this area, where the emission is going to come from. Our modeling shows a couple of things. One is that the turn-on voltages for the for the LED on zinc oxide should be a little higher than the, than the gallium nitride, and that would be expected. But more importantly, what it shows is that the emission intensity should be uh, higher for the um, LEDs thrown on zinc oxide. Um, and this has shown that the IQE, so both the IQE internal quantum efficiency is higher than zinc oxide. So it should actually be able to produce some um, high quality LEDs. So this is an LED structure that we, uh, that we made. Um, we still use that simple buffer layer technology. We end type, we p type built, sorry, that's my clock won't tell me that I just run out of time. And uh, we did a multiple quantum lattice and we were able to see emission here about 550. So we were looking for a, an LED that worked about um, 555, so something that lattice match and gave us emission in the green. So we were able to produce a device that worked. So in conclusion, and um, we've shown some of the data here, the, the important thing is we learned here how to stabilize growth of the um, gallium nitride, in the gallium nitride on, on, on a substrate that is inherently unstable. A lot of it had to do, and I can talk to all the details of the interface between the two layers and how we control that. We did make some LED structures and these LED structures uh, did have a higher active need for uh, devices going on sapphire. So with that, I'm done and then we'll be available for some questions. Thank you very much, Ian. Nice talk. Uh, Professor Ian, I have very, uh, one very short question. What should be the optimum uh, value of uh, thickness of the layer uh, for, a, a good, uh, for use as a good substrate? And what should be the minimum value of uh, surface roughness? Uh, 
or maximum value of the surface roughness so that we can use it as a good substrate. Yeah, so um, typically for gallium nitride that would be about 2.5 Armstrongs or so. These layers were a little rougher, they were about one nanometer or so, and that kind of just reflects the fact that this technology is, uh, is, is newer. The overall layer thickness that you're typically growing for a LED structure and a commercial LED structure may be about four microns or so. Um, even that stick of them, what people want, and a lot of the thickness goes to addressing the issues of the lattice mismatch with the substrate layer. But in a lot of these devices, they remove the substrate completely, and with zinc oxide, that's very simple to do, primarily so that you don't capture any light back into the device and it escapes the device directly rather than having some type of internal internal reflection in it. So, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, thank you Professor once again. So, if there is no any question, let's uh, thank the speaker once again uh, with a big applause. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. It was uh, uh, appreciated. I <laughs> hope to see you have some uh, Ian, <laughs> thank you very much Ian for uh, you and both Professor Dr. Takmi being awake for the midnight. Uh, but, <laughs> so you are awake at 1.45 a.m. really midnight, you are midnight. <laughs> thank you. Really so it's okay, it's okay. So, so, so really appreciate your commitment. Uh, to support uh, our IX science and of course support our education system and the researcher, especially women university in Pakistan. Thank you. Really no, thank you. Thank you. I, I may go sleep now, so I yes, I, yes. I don't know. <laughs> I want time to have, have, have sweet dreams. Thank you. And where are you? I assume you're in Charlotte, right? Uh, no, no. I, I am in, in Lahore. Unfortunately, right. I, I had uh, some health issues, so that's why I'm participating from home. But tomorrow, inshallah, I'm planning to be on site. Yes. Yeah. I, I had unexpected, uh, unexpected severe health issues, that's why uh, I could not be in person. But I am in Lahore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please take care of yourself. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. uh, thank you, Professor Ina, once again. So, the next speaker of this session is Professor Dr. Shazia Bashir. She is Professor and Dean of Mathematical and Physical Sciences and Director of Institute of Physics, Department of Physics, Government College, University Lahore. She is going to present on the topic Laser Technology applications, innovations, and future trends. So let's welcome Professor Dr. Shadi Abhi. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Zuhra. Yani, Professor Dr. Safi Anju for the kind invitation and providing me again to speak in my alma mater. I did my FSC and BSc from Lahore College for Women University, so I always love to come to again to my alma mater. And it is a full bloom spring, so I really love it. Thank you very much for the invitation. So, Professor Dr. Shahid Atik and Professor Dr. Saira Riaz, I will start as usual with the verses of Iqbal. Har chand ijade maani hai khudadaat, koshish se kaha marte hunar pant hai aza. Khune rege me maar ki karmi se hata me, mein khanai haafi so, ke put khanai pehzaat. 
بے محنت پہم کوئی جوہر نہیں کھلتا روشن شرط پیشہ سے ہے خانے کے فرحات سو وتھ دس میسج آف اقبال آئی ول اسٹارٹ مائی ٹاک ٹو آل دا ینگ جنریشن کہ اب وقت آ گیا ہے کہ کتنی پھولوں اور جگہوں کی باتیں کرنے والی یہ خوبصورت لڑکیاں اب الیکٹرو میگنیٹک ریڈیشنس کی حقیقت کو سمجھ سکیں اور بٹر فلائی افیکٹ اور صحیح معنوں میں بایو لینس کی انڈرسٹینڈ کر سکیں اس کے ساتھ خوبصورتی کو اپریشیٹ کریں لیکن لیبس میں زیادہ دیر تک بیٹھ کر کام کرنا سیکھیں محنت کرنا سیکھیں کیونکہ محنت کے بغیر کچھ بھی حاصل نہیں ہو سکتا اس جو عالم ایجاد میں ہے صاحب ایجاد جو عالم ایجاد میں ہے صاحب ایجاد ہر دور میں کرتا ہے طواف اس کا زمانہ جو عالم ایجاد میں ہے صاحب ایجاد ہر دور میں کرتا ہے طواف اس کا زمانہ یہ ایجاد کا کی ایک دنیا ہے غازی اس کے میدان میں قیادت کر زمانے کی جہاں میں سر کرو ہو جا آج کا جہاز تلوارے لے کر لڑنا نہیں ہے آج کا جہاز سائنٹ اور ٹیکنالوجی کے تھرو ہوتا ہے سو ٹو ڈیز مائی ٹاپک اس جیسے ٹیکنالوجی اپلیکیشنس انوویشنس اینڈ فیوچر فلمس آئی اسٹارٹ اٹ مائی کیریئر فرام گورنمنٹ کالج یونیورسٹی لاہور Currently, I am working as professor of physics at the Department of Physics, which was established in 1919. And Center for Advanced Studies in Physics was afterwards established by Professor Rafi Muhammad Chaudhry in 1954. Department of Electronics was established in 2022. The total faculty members in the Institute of Physics are 50. total number of registered students 841 and number of publications in international impact factor journals in last three years is 550. Professor Rafi Muhammad Chaudhry was direct student of Brother Ford. He came on the invitation of Pai Diyazah Muhammad Ali Jinnah to Pakistan. He was working in Aligarh University And at that time, we offered him that we are giving the flag check. You can become the director general of our institute, but he came on the invitation of Farid Azam. And then he established first nuclear laboratory of Pakistan and first accelerator, Spock Craft Walter accelerator with energy of 1.2 mV was established by Professor Rafi Muhammad Chaudhry. at CAS, Center for Advanced Studies in Physics, Comet Poly University. And he invited Cockroft, Walton, and Dada Kurt also at Pakistan. At that time, it was the golden era of physics in Pakistan. Every year, one global event in physics uh, used to come and were visiting the laboratories and giving funding and gifts to Pakistan. These are some pictures you can see. Like a song, you know? Yeah. So you can see. All of this. I said, yeah, this is good. So, Professor, in the center, you can see Professor Rafi Muhammad Chaudhry standing in the high tension laboratory. Here you can see a copter of water next to the And This legacy continued that Chadwick, the discoverer of Newton, was the student of Rutherford, discoverer of Proton, who was the student of Thompson, the discoverer of Electron. Of course, legacy continued. We are not so much able as Professor Rafi Muhammad Chaudhry, but we were the student of Professor Fizan Ulhaq, who was direct student of Professor Rafi Muhammad Chaudhry. So I actually learned the ABC of research for Professor Fizan Ulhaq. May Allah grant him the highest ranks in Jannah, who passed away in 2023. So we have programs of MPhil Applied Physics, Physics and Electronics, PhD Physics, PS uh, Honors Physics and Electronics School. 
We have research group, data research group, materials research group, plasma materials processing group, theoretical plasma physics group, accelerator group, nanomaterials research group, simulation and quantum computing research group. In 2009, Again, Professor Fezanul Haq submitted the project to Higher Education Commission of Pakistan and second accelerator, which is called the Peloton Accelerator with Energy of Fuel, is again installed at Center for Advanced Studies in Physics with its efforts at Government College University. So we have the honor that we have not only the one accelerator but two accelerators at the same university. So in 2020, it was well functioning and with the collaboration of UHUTA Research Laboratories, we opened the whole tank and again repaired it. It was a fair uh, step and by the help of Allah, now it is working successfully. In laser laboratories, we have anti air laser with first, second, third harmonic and primary laser in ultraviolet region with energy 120 millijoule wavelength, 248 nanometers. Then we have laser induced spectrum spectroscopy set up through which we can uh, evaluate the electron temperature and electron density of the plasma and we can also identify unknown elements like minerals, stones, So but with the help of laser induced spectrum spectroscopy, we can identify if it is the real gold or not. And we can identify the Harmful elements such as our lipstick sublimation use with lead degree ISO standards exceed Kajate. In parts per million, parts per million, we can evaluate this uh, lead concentration and all other hazardous elements in toys, in paints, in all other uh, elements we can identify. And people are also working on space. Basically, we can identify nitrogen, oxygen, organ concentration. So, if we have this into spectrum spectroscopy, we cannot only evaluate the plasma parameters, but we can also identify unknown elements. Then we have titanium sapphire laser, that is the state of thought laboratory. If you go abroad, inshallah, in her PhD, in every technologically advanced laboratories, you will find titanium sapphire laser. It is actually a femtosecond laser. So what is the advantage of femtosecond laser over nanosecond laser? Because the first duration is short and intensity is defined as energy per unit area per unit time. If I ask you this, if the first duration is short, what is the advantage of it? Can you give this answer to this question? Because it is an interactive session. So can I ask from you people, what will be the advantage of reducing the first duration of the Laser. If we have two lasers, one is with nanosecond duration and the other one is with the first duration of femtosecond, which will be preferred. Can you give this answer to the students? Please listen, because I have come to the front row, they all know everything. So, for the end of the year, they are motivated to talk to the end of the year. They are motivated to talk to the end of the year. They are motivated to talk to the end of the year. So I just want to interact with you people and to want, I, I just want to motivate you people. I just want to encourage you people. He cannot be an interactive session and it's not a good thing. If you have any questions, you can ask me what you want to do in the second instance instead of the second instance. So what will you answer? Intensity is defined as energy per unit area per unit time. जितनी आप shorter duration की तरफ जाएंगे उतनी intensity ज़्यादा हो जाएगी उसी के बीच में ठीक है so nanosecond से अगर आप giga watt तक जा सकते हैं तो femtosecond से you can go up to petra watt and tera watt intensities तो आजकल जो जो अभी अगली अगला दौर है जिसमें आप x rays electrons ions की pulses femtosecond duration तक generate करना चाहते हैं you always prefer femtosecond laser because it is the briefest event invented by the human being but has the long lasting effects on the human kind. He can be again discussion So you can see the So you can or any kind of reality. This is water, acetone, and water, 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 and water,
Yeah. We can fabricate different nanoparticles in this technique by using nanoparticles. Can I make a post now, Rajkumar? So this is a wonderful tool to fabricate nanoparticles. Of this material, can make particles. Can I make a silver, gold, copper, whatever is the material. You put your material inside the liquid. This is a very wet material, and material after ablation will. फ्रेगमेंटेड नहीं था इस दा ये जो पीछे से दुबारा तो सब खाते Why we are upgrading that material in liquids? Because liquid liquid will confine the plasma. If you upgrade the medium, the medium plasma will be created, but that uh, plasma will be confined in the presence of uh, liquid environment, and ablation efficiency will be significantly enhanced. And you can control the growth size and density of the particles by ablating materials in different liquids. And the second uh, advantage of ablating materials in liquids is you can uh, uh, basically enhance the chemical reactivity. So when copper is reacting with oxygen of that material, it will make copper oxide. You can make germanium hydrides. You can make silver nitrides if you are ablating in with the presence of nitrogen environment. So chemical reactivity will be significantly enhanced. Excitation of atoms. So whenever there is ionization, we 
before the ionization, there is excitation and de excitation. And when atoms are de excited, we can see illumination of atoms. And then excitation, de excitation is actually uh, captured by the spectrum. So, setup of first is the deposition of. So we are basically depositing three things with second harmonic of Fabian laser. You can see once again. Did you green light a basically laser? Second harmonic of Fendi and laser. And inside the chamber, we are depositing thin films. So, all kinds of thin films we can grow with the help of lasers. It is a wonderful technique to grow thin films. Uh, Supercapacitors, semiconducting materials, metals, metallic oxides, metallic nitrides, metallic carbides we can grow with the help of lasers. along with the scientific discoveries, inventions, Hathere, Tasaraf, Ye Badal, Ye Ghatai, Ye Gumbade Aflaaf, Ye Makhmoor Ghatai, Ye Kof, Ye Darya, Ye Samantar, Ye Hawaii, Thi, Peshe, Nazar, Kal, Ko, Prishno, Ki Adai, Aai, Nai, Aishyam, Nai, Ajat, Nai, Badai, Khola, Samede, Palakte, Tazade, Mashrik, Se, Dhatke, Nai, Suraj, Ko, Sahade, Why we use lasers for diff different applications due to the special characteristics such as monochromaticity, high intensity, coherence, minimum divergence, and from the fundamental point of view, we can use the pump uh, methods to particularly introducing some delay between two pulses, and in this way, we are able to explore ultra fast phenomena which are taking place in different physics and chemistical chemistry sciences such as Coulomb's explosion, ultra fast melting, photochemistry, all these phenomena can only be explored with the help of empty separators. Then we have the pulse shaping. We can control the phase, frequency, shaping of the laser pulses and then we can uh, apply them according to our requirement in different pulse shaping experiments. 2023 Nobel Prize was granted to the three scientists on autocycle lasers because with the help of femtosecond lasers they have gen generated autocycle pulses and with the help of autocycle pulses we are able to explore the dynamics of electrons. Electron kitna time leta hai hydrogen ke orbit ke gate ke wall pone mein aapko pata hai 2 femtoseconds, fractions of femtoseconds. So those phenomena cannot be explored with ordinary lasers. Only autosecond lasers are required in order to explore the dynamics of electrons. Therefore, uh, Nobel Prize of 2023 was granted to three scientists on the discovery of autosecond lasers, which they had used for the uh, explore the dynamics of electrons. Similarly, 2018 Nobel Prize was also in physics was also granted to the three scientists and they have actually done their work on chaff pulse amplifications through which they have actually uh, successfully fabricated femtosecond lasers. So chaff is basically a dispersion 
So in order to control the dispersion, chip mirrors and chip amplification is actually generated inside the femtosecond lasers. And then we are not uh, suffering from dispersion and we are able to obtain femtosecond pulses at the output after passing through hundreds of optics. And we have a paper with Jonah Schickler because students are working in the University of Waterloo, Canada at uh, on the ISIP program. Femtosecond laser has three parts, mostly oscillator and amplifier compressor. And we bring it inside the vacuum chamber and uh, under uh, vacuum and control conditions we can expose different materials. Then we have lasers in material processing such as welding, cutting, drilling, surface modification, first laser deposition of thin films. Very hard and thick uh, metal can be cut with the help of lasers. And two perhaps state of the art facility of laser cutting. They are fabricated in the lasers, CO2 and DM lasers, and they are using those high power lasers for the cutting of variety of materials. So uh, this is not the case that we don't have any kind of facilities in Pakistan. Of course, we have such kind of facilities in Pakistan. We have collaboration with Optics Lab. We have collaboration with National Institute of Laser Electronics Center and Utah Health Laboratory. And uh, if you have any official tips, you must go to these institutes and you must also come to Comet Poly University to see all these laser laboratories and facilities so that you can become familiarized how the experiment actually works. I want to welcome Professor Dr. Shibukta Das and Professor Dr. Nizam. Dr. Kiha, thank you very much for coming. Okay, so laser hardening is one of the basic uh, tools through which we can harden the materials, and these materials will become more beneficial in the industry. We can increase the friction and corrosion resistance of the materials with the help of lasers. Then we can uh, use these materials in the industry because they will be, their life will be increased, their corrosion will be enhanced, corrosion resistance will be enhanced, and their friction will be enhanced. And after the hardness increase, enhanced and hardness, we can use these materials in variety of applications. We can grow different kinds of nano structures on the surfaces of the materials. and we can grow filaments, nanofilaments. Nowadays you know that we are using scanning electron microscopes in which we are using materials in which are actually field emitters. So basically field emission properties of the materials can be enhanced after the growth of these nanostructures because electron emission will be enhanced after the growth of these nanofilaments. So we can optimize our parameters and environment of the laser and we can grow different uh, 
structures and these structures can be well correlated with the compositional analyses evaluated by the Raman spectroscopy. Some bonds are broken and some new bonds are also formed on the surfaces of materials. So there is a wonderful tool in the sense that we can make polycrystalline material and be transformed into crystalline material and crystalline material can be transformed into amorphous material. And here you can see nanostructures, beautiful nanostructures on the surfaces of silicon under vacuum and air conditions. So when these nanostructures are actually grown, these materials will become very good thermionic emitters, very good field emitters, and we have established a setup in our laboratory indigenously that we can evaluate the field emission properties of the material after the growth of these structures. Then we can grow different micro nano gratings, and nowadays people are actually using spectrometers on the basis of these nano and micro gratings. Uh, with the help of lasers, you are able to grow nano gratings and micro gratings. You know, when well, uh, in 1954, first accelerator was established in Pakistan, Professor Rafi Muhammad Chaudhary did what he did. He put a beam on उसको मेटल्स पे फॉल के पाया और जब वो मेटल्स पे फॉल की तो उसे अल्ट्रावायलेट विजिबल रेडिएशन तो लेकिन वो डेट रेडिएशन एमिट हुई उस वक्त जो के रेजोल्यूशन नहीं थी तो उन्होंने फिर चार्ज एनोमीटर का फिल्टर रखा ग्रीन फिल्टर फिर उन्होंने चार्ज एनोमीटर का ग्लास फिल्टर लिया रेड फिल्टर और फोटो मल्टीप्लाई that high energy particles can be bombarded on the material surfaces and ultraviolet visible and IR radiations can be emitted out. And these radiations are actually the fingerprints of that material. You can identify the material. Just like my own group of fingerprints, this is the hard elements, the excitation states, and the excitation states are the wavelengths that are emitted. The material is the characteristics of the wavelengths. So, the material can be identified. So basically, we are able to identify unknown elements with the help of lasers because ultraviolet visible radiation can be emitted. Now we have the spectrometer with 0.1 nanometer resolution and we are not advanced. People are working on 0.0001 nanometer resolution spectrometers in international universities. Even then, we are much better than uh, so many institutes, but uh, of course, with 50 nanometer resolution as compared to 0.1 nanometer resolution, is too good. But even then, we are producing our So basically, you can grow with the help of yeah. you know, basically you can see a uh, Raman spectrometer uh, uh, spectroscopy and you can see the silicon single crystals and we can make this single crystal with the help of lasers into polycrystalline and amorphous. Similarly, you can take the graphite and you can do graphitic crystals. So amorphous material can be transformed into polycrystalline and crystalline materials and crystalline material can be transformed into polycrystalline amorphous according to your requirement. You can identify the energies of these particles and shear by the time of light by spectrometer and then you can correlate with these emission with the surface topographical analysis. So plasma is one of the basic tools through which we can investigate uh, different elements and this plasma afterwards can be used as a tool of electrons, ions and ultraviolet visible radiations. We are working tremendously on this induced plasma, we are using anti laser and you can see that initially all particles are combined together then there will be a loosen layer and afterwards fast moving electrons will move forward and heavy ions will left behind. There will be a separation between the fast moving electrons and ions and this charge separation will generate self-generated electric field. And we will be able to measure the 
self can material electric field and magnetic field of this plasma, and then we can use this plasma in different applications as a tool of electric and magnetic field source. Laser heat field accelerator. Now people are using lasers because you are already able to generate kilo uh, electron volt, me mega electron volt energy of particles, and then you can accelerate those particles. Because lasers, uh, ha, 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 lasers have energy in megawatt or terawatt, then with the help of lasers, you are able to generate ions and electrons. Then you can uh, accelerate these electrons and ions up to the further energies. And now we have very small accelerators with the help of lasers, and these are called tabletop accelerators. Okay. Fusion process mein inertial confinement fusion. जैसे सूरज में अल्लाह ताला ने कुदरत के इंतजाम रखा जितने हजार साल से कायनात कायन हैं उसमें दो लाइटर न्यूक्लियर लिखते हैं हैवी न्यूक्लियस बनते हैं उसके साथ एनर्जी रिलीज होती है सो साइंटिस्ट एंड फिजिस्ट आर ट्राइंग टू आर्टिफिशियली कंट्रोल द फ्यूजन एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ लेजर्स इन दिस प्रोसेस सिस्टम दिस इज कॉल्ड इनर्शियल कंफाइनमेंट फ्यूजन एंड दिस इज डन इन सन एंड जिनेवा दे आर ट्राइंग टू गेट फ्यूजन प्रोसेस विद द हेल्प ऑफ very very high intensity lasers and the glass lasers use karte hain aur thousands me lasers hote hain jo pellets pe ja ke uske coulomb explosion pe coulomb uh, impulsion to overcome karti hain aur jaise hi wo do lighter nuclei aapas mein milte hain ek heavy nucleus banta hai helium nuclei ban jata hai uske sath tremendous energy release ho jati hai non linear absorption then you can let me tell you is an application in medical science where you see for the removal of tattoos liposuction surgery ophthalmology dermatology and geoplasty cancer treatment urology that we are using for the identification of caries and for the uh, treatment of caries as well and we can also identify uh, healthy and uh, uh, tooth of caries with uh, laser induced spectroscopy as well Coagulation, uh, in which temperatures between 50 degrees and 100 Celsius degree is controlled, and you can do the retina stitching of eyes with the help of lasers. If the temperature is controlled, laser can uh, 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 increase the temperature in a controlled manner, and this process of laser-induced photoagulation can be used to destroy tumors, to treat various eye conditions, retinal disorders, diabetes, blood lesions, etc. Then you can use for the uh, precise spots in joints for arthroscopic surgery and laser surgeries. Then you can use in agriculture for the leveling of the uh, land and for the to scare the birds from the crops. And you can treat your seeds with the lasers, and there of course they will increase the, your your fertilization will be increased. Then. Widely, we are using lasers as range finders in multi applications. We went to optics lab. उनका काफ़ हफ्ते निकाल ज़मीन से लेके उन्हें range finders बनाते हैं. पाकिस्तान में बनते हैं. बहुत थोड़े लोगों को पता होगा कि range finders पाकिस्तान में बनते हैं. Optics lab के पास infrared lasers बनाने की बहुत खूबसूरत technology है. वो खुद grow करते हैं अपने जो ये है NDA crystal. और फिर उसके बाद उनका जो optics को वो कोट कोटिंग करते हैं और फिर उसी लैब में कंप्लीट इंडिजिनसली छोटे छोटे लेजर्स बनते हैं जो फिर वो आदमी को प्रोवाइड करते हैं कहीं मुझे पकड़ ही ना लें एजेंसीज में ये बात ओपन नहीं बता रही हूँ ऑल्डो इट्स सीक्रेट दैट दे प्रोवाइडिंग दीज लेजर्स इंडिजिनस आफ्टर इंडिजिनस फेब्रिकेशन टू आर्मी और यूँ पड़ा होता है कि नीचे से लेकर छत तक उनकी रेज फाइनर्स की जो लेजर्स हैं बनी हुई हैं और पाकिस्तान इतना भी गरीब मुल्क नहीं है या इतना भी साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी में पीछे नहीं है यू विजिट ऑल दीज टेक्नोलॉजिकली एडवांस लेबॉरटरीज You will be surprised. They are looking like America. They have very state-of-the-art facilities in their labs, and they are working, of course. इसकी तरह जैसे red और से environmental conditions के बजे रोटी से lighters भी use होती हैं, ठीक है? Ultra cold atoms की charge के लिए quantum cryptography. आजकल जो कि cyber crime का दौर है, तो you can send your messages. In hidden form, but there will be particular photons which will carry the those uh, messages. उन photons के messages को reveal करने के लिए क्या करेंगे? आगे आपके polarizers लगेंगे. वो एक direction में polarized होंगे. कोई भी उसको reveal नहीं कर सकेगा. सिर्फ एक known person जिसको उसकी state of polarization पता होगी. 
उसको रिवील करने का उसका मैसेज ठीक है द लेजर बेस्ट इमेजिंग दिस इज अवर ग्रुप बाय टेक्निकल यूनिवर्सिटी बियाना ये लेफ्ट साइड पे जो है ये प्रोफेसर विफिन हुसिनस्की हैं और साइड में आपको जो एक्सट्रीम लाइट पे नजर आ रही लाइट ही आती है अनफॉर्चूनेटली इसकी लाइट काम नहीं कर रही सॉरी ये मायर है माय ग्रुप फ्रेंड है ये हमारा ग्रुप है ये दस ग्रुप रेड साइड पे एडवांस्ड एजिंग इन फिजिक्स चैप्टर सेकंड में इंस्टॉलेशन एट के स्पोर्ट्स पे कौन से स्पोर्ट्स पे बिलोंग्स टू ऑस्ट्रिया ऑन हिज नेम दे हैव Uh, one street which is called Boardsman Gossi. They honor their scientists. Therefore, one street is Schrodinger Cafeteria, Technical University, Vienna. And Schrodinger also belongs to Austria, so Schrodinger Cafeteria. And we used to go to Schrodinger Cafeteria usually for the lunch. I am with my professor and just for that, have to say, little lab. We are meeting something at Schrodinger Cafeteria. और ये बड़ा ही interesting phenomenon है। ये उस साला स्वीडन में वो अपनी अपना flag सारे ही अपने parliament के ऊपर अपना flag लगाते हैं। लेकिन जैसे स्वीडन में कोई graduate होते हैं, तो उसी उसकी country का flag भी वो अपने parliament पे लगाते हैं। So all those Pakistani who are living in Sweden, they say when some graduate is from Pakistan, all the day they are feeling proud that आज कोई Pakistani graduate भी प्रोड्यूस हुआ क्योंकि हमारा चेहरा उसके स्वीडन की पार्लियामेंट पे रह रहता है दिस इज द वे फॉर योर ऑल ऑफ स्कॉलर्स थैंक यू टू प्रोफेसर जान साहब टू प्रोफेसर रफी मोहम्मद चौधरी वाइस चांसलर दिस यू माय अल्मा मेटर थैंक यू लाहौर कॉलेज फॉर बीइंग हु इज आल्सो माय अल्मा मेटर आई एम हाईली थैंकफुल टू प्रोफेसर डॉ शिव गुप्ता नास हु मेड दिस कैंपस सो ब्यूटीफुल आई फील सो गुड व्हेन आई एंटर एट लाहौर कॉलेज फॉर बीइंग एन यूनिवर्सिटी So much thank you, Sinski, my expert, Dr. Shahid Rafi. Thank you all. Thank you all for the answers. For inviting me, it's so awesome to have you. Good morning. Yeah, thank you, Professor Shahidia, for a very beautiful, very informative talk. Uh, apart from your physics, you have always been a force of inspiration for uh, all of us, and must be for uh, source of inspiration for uh, all these. students because you always keep us motivating with the uh, balls poetry uh, with this need of we are today so i uh, know the uh, house is open if there is any any questions, questions please. Uh, from the audience please from students from faculty okay. ओके I welcome you to the opening ceremony of Fourth Double I Science International Conference. I am Sabha Tehriyah from Department of Physics, Lahore College for Women University, and I will be your host for this inaugural session. Today we have gathered at Lahore College for Women University here to celebrate the convergence of minds from across the globe in pursuit of knowledge and innovation. But before formally starting the ceremony, I would like to invite our speaker and chief uh, vice chancellor of Government of Punjab <coughs> of Lahore College for Women University to join on stage. Along with her, I would also like to invite our chief guest, Professor Dr. Nizamuddin. And our guest of honor, Dr. Ritika Kauri, to join us on stage. I would also like to invite Professor Dr. Safia Anjum, Chairperson, Department of Physics, to join us on stage. Also, our Professor Dr. Zohra Nadi Kiani, who is the conference chair, very kindly join us. Professor Dr. Saira Riaz, 
She is also a member of organizing committee from, for our university and this current um, conference. So, Professor Dr. Saya Riyaz, kindly join us on stage. Now we will and now we will move to the a brief introduction of this conference. This international interdisciplinary event stands as a beacon of collaboration, bringing together and when experimentalists, mathematicians, life scientists, and practitioners on a common platform. Over the years, the Life Science Conference has been instrumental in inspiring and sharing cutting-edge research and development in various fields. The journey of this event has been one of the resilience and growth. From its inception at Women University Multan in 2020 to the hybrid events hosted by GC Women University Faisalabad. This year we are hosting this mega event at Lahore College for Women University and this journey, journey will continue to the next year. Might be possible the next host for this conference will be concept. So this, uh, this is an event which is disseminating knowledge for the last years in Pakistan and globally. Now I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Zohra Nazi Siani, who is the conference chair for the welcome note. Madam Kindly. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. Uh, I welcome all the distinguished guests, especially our chief guests, guests of honor, faculty, deans, directors, and dear students. Being conference chair, I welcome you all in the fourth IS Science Conference in LCWU, uh, which is comprised of three days from 16th to 18th April, which is under the umbrella of SPY and with the collaboration of many international and national organizations. Center for Solid State, Physics, Pinal University Lahore, Comstock University, both um, uh, Lahore campus and Bihari campus, and as well as University of North Carolina, USA, which are the international hosts of this conference. As you all know, being students of physics as well as being students of science, that last era was of the electronics. And now the current era which is starting, that is of photonics. So it is very important to discuss photonics on the different platform. That's why um, the Klasi Raja has selected its name as the Photonics and the Physical Sciences. This is truly a uh, conference of science and technology and you all know that our Vice Chancellor is also Dean of Science and Technology. Because if you go through the program, you can see that in one session we are discussing about the drug uh, mind. In the next session, we are discussing about the photonics. If some speakers are very energetic to tell about the renewable energy or the different energy sources, then the, in the other room, there is small technologies are discussed which can make our life easier. Basically, physics is divided into two categories, experimental and theoretical. And again, the both uh, important sessions are discussed in this conference. We have experimental scientists as well as theoretical scientists here to discuss all these things. So dear students, basically this conference is meant for you so that you can understand that now science is a global village. Physics 
is also uh, opted by the other uh, science subjects as well as even social science subjects. So this is the beauty of your this current century. At the same time, uh, I think I feel very honored uh, to uh, tell her that in last three and a half ten years, we have conducted 14 international events. And in those 14 international events, Seven international events were a three-day international, of which four were the webinar and three were the international conferences. Current conference was planned for four to six March. All the panels were done, speakers were invited, program was discussed. But as you know that due to general election in Pakistan, we have to postpone this uh, conference. And now, in the month of April, we are carrying it. At the same time, uh, uh, I must uh, mention here and acknowledge um, uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. Shubhutanar, who is president chief of the conference, uh, because without her encouragement, our leadership maybe such a big conference was not possible, especially. Especially when a conference is postponed, then it is always difficult uh, to manage it. But Alhamdulillah, we have managed it. And also it is very important to mention here that uh, speakers from 10 countries are participating in our conference, as well as meanwhile all the big universities of Pakistan, especially Punjab, Khabarbukha, they are participating in conference. So this is a big success. Their students and their faculty as well. I hope that during these uh, three days of conference, you will be enlightened by the different uh, areas of sciences. Have a nice day and have a very good conference ahead. Thank you for joining the conference and making our heart good. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Zura. Now, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Yasin Raja, who is the general chair for this conference. Mm -hmm. Professor Dr. Yasin uh, couldn't join us physically, but he is on Zoom meeting with us. So, sir, if you hear, hear me kindly share your slides. Dr. Yasin Raja basically is the conference chair and uh, general chair and he is going to discuss the theme and objective of the Eye Science Conference of this year which is 2024. Good morning. Uh, I'm having a little bit difficulty in my uh, display system. Uh, Okay, we start. <clears throat> Once again, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all the audience, the podium for parties, especially the Vice Chancellor and all the uh, people sitting at the stage. Uh, I apologize not being uh, present in, in person, although in my uh, because of my health condition, I'm missing this. Uh, really a great opportunity by hoping to join you tomorrow sometime inshallah. Uh, as, uh, as a part of uh, uh, the opening ceremony, the, the introduction of this conference, the II science, so international inclusive. So when you say II science is international inclusive, so we are uh, first of all both national and international together and inclusive means physics, Chemistry, biology, biological sciences, health sciences, everybody is doing it. Well, each discipline is important and it's all right, but when you combine all these, that's what the way the public life is. Having said that, and uh, this is the fourth uh, event, and I hope, inshallah, uh, it will uh, continue further uh, as we move on. So, <coughs> The major objective uh, as uh, one of uh, our uh, 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 in the introducing uh, speaker uh, on the stage secretary has also mentioned some of the highlights 
It's the purpose to bring together experimentalists, tourists, mathematicians, and info scientists on a common platform to inspire and share the state of the art, research, development in education, in e science, and healthcare. So, to cover high tech photonic materials with the perspective of physical, chemical, and biological sciences, and the resulting application in energy, info sciences, healthcare, and in fact, our human lives and environment. So, those are the key objectives and the key approach uh, which we have adopted. Uh, of course, others are doing it in, in their own sphere, but we started, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, over five years ago. And this is the fourth event. The, another major objective is to cultivate the cooperative efforts between the private and public sectors while ensuring the educational outreach and economic growth for global peace and prosperity. So, peace and prosperity is the key word uh, which every Pakistani and everybody in over the globe understand. Uh, prosperity is needed and peace is needed in all, all over the globe. And uh, we, of course, uh, will let uh, our youngster generation to think about and reflect. Uh, and hopefully, in the next uh, discussion, we can elaborate on that. Moving forward, uh, I again recognize and welcome our uh, uh, faculty in chief, uh, Professor Dr. Bhutanar, the Vice Chancellor of the University. Uh, International Advisory Committee, Dr. Sayyid Ali Hader, and Dr. Zafar Tatwi. Zafar Tatwi is joining us in, in, uh, online, although it's midnight uh, in Houston, uh, Texas, but uh, he's very committed and very supportive for this event. And of course, uh, our National Advisory Team, uh, Professor Dr. Piani, Dr. Sleem Farooq, Dr. Saira Ayaz, Dr. Seba. Uh, Zeba Israq, yeah. Dr. Farad Jabeen from Faisalabad University. So she had, uh, we did go to events uh, past two years here. So we continue uh, our previous uh, 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 organizers as a part of the team and future organizers as well. And uh, the national publicity team, uh, especially Professor Dr. Chela Zaseen and Dr. Shabbat Farad. And technical support. Uh, director IT team and director Web TV team and uh, estate artists at uh, LC, LCWE. Uh, local host committee, uh, Dr. Anika Samar, Dr. Talat Srisham, Dr. Salma Basim, Dr. Uh, Madhya Hayal, Dr. Hina Nazli, Professor Sophia Anyun, uh, who is the current chairperson at that. And then Dr. Aliya Khaled, uh, Dr. Uh, Saima Khaled, uh, Ms. Afshar Rashid, Ms. Sabah Tahniya, sorry for this pronunciation, Ms. Sabah Tahniya, Dr. Farah Ayyub. And uh, this is uh, the symposium, and as part of the conference, we have three other categories at the symposium. And uh, one of the symposium is the emerging technologies and challenges and effective teaching and learning skills and fees in higher education, which of course is multidisciplinary effort. And uh, Professor Dr. Rubina Palu, who is the uh, director of industry linkage sector at OMSAC, and uh, she had, uh, she was of course the creator uh, last year, and the year before, uh, vice chancellor. Uh, of the University of Faisalabad, so the host of this talk. Uh, uh, Professor Asar Hashmi, uh, who uh, was a component exam at Mason State University, and then he will be joining us uh, as part of this uh, symposium as we try to start tomorrow. So, a symposium on photonic materials and devices and emerging integrated photonics. Uh, Professor Dr. M. Hussain Sayyad. Sayyad uh, CEO, currently CEO of Asian Photonics and the former professor and dean of engineering at GIK. And uh, the symposium uh, on smart sensing and e healthcare application using IoT, uh, Internet of Things, uh, Artificial Intelligence, AI, and ML machine learning technologies. Uh, Major General, retired 
Professor Dr. M. Aslan, the former rector of Shifar Medical University, Islamabad, and the uh, engineer Shiftar Ahmed, former uh, professor and the chair of uh, Bagley University, and visiting professor at U.S. Chan, Dr. Ahmed, and Dr. Engineer uh, Robert Splinter, the chief operating officer and CEO, intelligent bioinformatics, United UK, Manchester, UK. So he will be joining the online uh, as we move forward. And then uh, this, of course, is a uh, list of our uh, advisory board. So we will, I will not read to engage the debate of the time. Move forward weekly and uh, admire your patience, listen to all those details. And uh, there are, of course, so there are names behind this conference, more than 100 uh, reviewers who are volunteer and review the paper and, and uh, help us to qualify, uh, to, to select it, uh, qualified uh, papers for the uh, conference proceeding and so on and so forth. Um, the conference proceedings, um, uh, both papers which have been reviewed, which have been submitted and have presented rather. Uh, so the fact that the conference proceeding will be edited by myself, and Dr. Dora Mukiani and the same had, and hopefully we will have four points somebody has to see the contribution. So, three days program, inshallah. Uh, so, I've made a workshop and a special symposium, uh, workshop on web based simulation uh, and remote access visualization. Uh, that is a important part of the program, symposium on engineering technology. And challenge in effective teaching that of course will be here the second day and symposium on e healthcare as we talked about. Moving forward, uh, that's just a quick uh, for the students and for those who uh, would like to know that there is a university of North Carolina, I come from, and uh, we have a really good support to have uh, international collaboration uh, to support to the education all over the world. Uh, this is the part of the map, and then North Carolina is the east section uh, of the United States of America. The fifth star is our city, Charlotte, where I come from. And this red star here. Uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Yasin. I think there is, an, there is a connectivity issue. So we are moving towards our next presenter and uh, basically I'm going, I'm going to invite Professor Dr. Sakya Anjum, who is the chairperson of the Department of Physics at Mahar Balas Pohman University. Madam, kindly share a few remarks on this conference. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear Gordi Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Shibhita Nath, all deans, directors, CODs, chairpersons, faculty members, and my dear students, assalamu alaikum. It is with a great pleasure and honor that I stand before you today to introduce the three physics department of FCWU at International Sports II Science Conference. First of all, I want to describe a brief history of the physics department. The Department of Physics was established in 1951. The BSc classes were started in 1958 and later the BSc honor classes were conducted in 1960. The MSc program was started in 1966 and later on the PhD program was successfully started in 2003. Currently the Department of Physics is offering four year BS program as well as two, we are offering two MS programs. One is MS Physics program and the other is Nanotechnology, MS in Nanotechnology and PhD also. And then in recent development, we are also offering the BS 4 four year program of self coding As long as the research facility is concerned, we have excellent central research laboratory which was under the supervision of Mr. Farouk Bashir. It equipped with more than 80 sophisticated machines like scanning electron microscope, XRD, GCMS, 
HPLC, UV visible, atomic absorption, spectrophotometry, FTIR, high temperature furnaces, PG, DTA, etc. We also have a DTL, DLCS machine. The physics department at LTWU is the dynamic hub of intellectual curiosity and scientific exploration. They come pricing on the dedicated faculty, brilliant researcher, and motivated students. We are committed to pushing the boundaries of human understanding in the kingdom of modern and classical physics. From the, from the mechanics, from the quantum mechanics to astrophysics, from particle physics to condensed matter physics. Our department boosts a diverse array of expertise and uh, interest. Our faculty members are internationally renowned for their contribution to their respective fields with the publication in top international journals and collaboration with leading institutions worldwide. Through the innovative teaching methods, hands-on laboratory experiences, and mentorship, we empower our students, students to become critical thinkers, problem solvers, and leaders in the scientific community. As we gather here today in this, in this exchange ideas, to exchange ideas, collaborate to different projects, and share the course of the future scientific and reward, I invite to engage with the brilliant mind and cutting edge research and mission from the physics department at GWU. Together, let us embark on the journey of discovery, exploration, and enlightenment as we continue to endure the mystery of the universe and shape the future of the physics. At last, I want to say thank you to Dr. Uh, Madam Rifi Kafaro for the support and for providing the uh, shield and certificates to the conference participants. Thank you, Madam. And uh, thank you very much. Haji, all the 40 PhD students, MS students, our day and night, and Dr. Zohar Najib Kiani really worked hard to uh, have this conference. And all the staff members and sporting staff, thank you very much. All thank you. Thank you so much, madam. But there is a special thanks to our guest of honor, Dr. Rafika Fari, for for uh, contributing towards the education, higher education of women in Pakistan, and especially in Lahore College for Women University, she is currently financially supporting few of our PhD scholars. So uh, I think this needs uh, appreciation and round of applause. Now I would like to invite our worthy Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Shubhita Nath, for few opening remarks. Uh, before starting, I have a very sad news to have one to, uh, want to share. Just like you know, Dr. Kossar, who was our physicist, in today's session, he was given a talk that he has been given to the world. So, I will give you all the advice for him to give him the advice for him to give him the advice.
خدا سے دعا ہے کہ ان کے درجات بلند ہوں اور ہم سب کو بھی ان چیزوں کو اپنے فون میں رکھنا چاہیے آپ یہ دیکھیں کہ شی واز ریڈی ٹو کم ہیئر فار دس کانفرنس اور سڈنلی انجائنا کا اٹیک ہوا اینڈ شی پاس دا وے تو دس از لائف سو وی شوڈ کیپ دا الٹیمیٹ جو ہماری ڈیسٹینیشن ہے وی شوڈ کیپ دیٹ ڈیسٹینیشن ان ہماری مائنڈ اور اگر ہم یہ رکھیں گے تو ڈیفینیٹلی ہمارے ڈیٹس بھی بہت اچھے ہو جائیں گے تو یہ میری آپ سب سے ریکویسٹ ہے باقی فارملی تو ہے لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین اسٹیم گیسٹ اینڈ پیشن ایٹ ریسرچرس اٹ از ویتھ گریٹ فلائر اینڈ ایکسائٹمنٹ دیٹ آئی ویلکم ٹو آن ٹو دی اوپننگ سیرمنی اور فورتھ آئی آئی سائنس انٹرنیشنل کانفرنس دس گیدرنگ ول مارک دا پائیوٹل مومنٹ ان دا ورلڈ آف سائنس ویئر مائنڈس فرام ڈائیورس ڈسپلن کنورس ٹو شیئر انسائٹ کولیبریٹ اینڈ ٹو فیل اوور انڈرسٹینڈنگ of the universe forward. It is of the great honor for Lahore College for Women University for organizing this conference. It is co-organized with the uh, Center for Solid State Physics, Punjab University, uh, uh, Comsex University, and University of North Carolina, United States. Uh, this interdisciplinary event will definitely bring together experimentalists, theorists, mathematicians and info scientists on a common platform to inspire and share state-of-art research and development. It will cover high-tech photonic materials and devices from the perspective of physical, chemical and biological sciences and resulting applications in the area of information, science, energy and impact on human lives and environment. As we come together in this vibrant exchange of intellect and curiosity, let us embrace the diversity of prospective and experience that define the scientific community. It is through collaboration and open dialogue that we will overcome challenges, ignite new uh, discoveries, and ultimately pave the way towards a brighter tomorrow. I extend my sincere gratitude to all participants, speakers and organizers for their dedication and contribution to making this conference a reality. Together, let us embark on this enriching journey of discovery, bound by our shared passion for science and unwavering commitment to pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. Thank you and my dear. And may this conference be a beacon of inspiration and innovation for all of us. Thank you for joining us in this event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam. Now, a brief introduction of our guest of honor. Mr. Rafika Faru is a prestigious alumni of the Har College for Women University. She acted as a research scholar after graduation and became a lecturer in 1999. She retired as an associate professor from the Har College for Women University. After that, she continued her service for knowledge and she has helped setting up a practical laboratory in, uh, for master students at the Har College for Women University. She helped upgrading the school of government, of government of Punjab to community colleges. Mrs. Farooq, Mrs. Farooq has joined Aqua College as Director of Computer Department. She has given 50 years for her life to education. Now she is providing assistance to the students of Physics Department and the Hall College for Women University for uplifting the PhD students. Let's once again give her a warm welcome and a round of applause for her services. And I would like to request Mrs. Farooq for a few words. Madam, kindly, podium of yours.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Very good morning to all of you. Madam Vice Chancellor, Madam Deans, Professors, Chairs, thank you very much for inviting me to the science conference. A social scientist speaking to a science company, which is, I'll see how the connections will be maintained. But I really feel honored to be invited to speak to this conference. Before I speak, I want to congratulate the organizers of the conference, the original conceivers, who conceived the interdisciplinary as a major trust of the conference. I think that's an important dimension I want to highlight. That we, we need to enter this new approach to our teaching and learning in the university and colleges. We are very fragmented, very isolated in departments and disciplines and faculty. But until and unless we become interdisciplinary, we cannot promote science and technology. Promoted. So I think in that light, this is a very good content. Bring together chemistry, physics, mathematics other subjects, and I think they should also bring social sciences to it. That makes sense. I will tell you why. I think I used to teach a course in the University for philosophy of social science. Philosophy of social science, when I started teaching, doing some research, I found out with the advent of science, people said there's no, nothing Nothing is acceptable except science. So they, they question religion and God and everybody. But unless you prove me physically that something exists, I will not believe. The debate started, and Max Weber, who was a social scientist, argued the case. No, social science also is science, it's social physics. Because this also follows rules and regulations and, and idioms and hypotheses, so you cannot dismiss social sciences as nothing. So, therefore, debate became social sciences and social physics. I remember that discussion in my classes and when I was teaching PhD classes for MPhil and PhD on social science philosophy. So, I think. Physics, of course, is, is rated to be a high level science in sciences because it has developed a lot of innovations and technologies as you were discussing laser technologies and spectrometer and others. But there was a time in the same university, I used to argue with the US by Chandra, he used to argue for chemistry. Chemistry should be the major science. And she argued that three chemistry departments, not one. For each chemistry, she would say there will be head of the department. That was the argument she made. You may not know that I've been following Dorp College University since 2006, when I became the Vice Chancellor of Gujarat University. Soon after that, I became a member of syndicate of your syndicate I've served for three, four years. Especially the discussion I remember when you're planning to go to Kalachaka for campus. I proposed don't send departments, establish centers of excellence, putting together some departments, not one by one. I still hold that argument that we need to work as centers of excellence, not as one as chemistry, physics, and mathematics. They are all disciplines, yes, in their own right. But you want to make some meaningful outcome out of this, then you have to work together as you are doing in this interdisciplinary conference. I also remember I was interviewing a physics professor for a job in Gujarat University. He had done his PhD from China. You know, Gujarat industry was, uh, when I established, I was always trying to link with the industry in Gujarat, Kyalpur, and Gujarat. 
I asked him, what will you do apart from teaching physics in this university? He said, well, whatever industry wants to do, and for example, I said, Pakistan imports and spends millions of dollars on semiconductor. Can we not produce it? In Bajrawala and also, why can't you produce semiconductors? When, when the Korea semiconductor business was taken over by China, in those days, China took over lead in the semiconductor business. So why can't we start building small semiconductor business so that we don't have to import so it's the semiconductors? Well, yes, we can do it. But unfortunately, I spent eight years in Gujarat, it didn't materialize. What I'm trying, I'm trying to drive at, unless such conferences, such teaching and learning enters into production in the industry, your graduates, your faculty, your researchers do not make sense that teaching. Teaching is not sufficient. And teaching is also changed dramatically now. You cannot just lecture and teach and PowerPoint and teach. It has gone change now. What I'm suggesting is that through this interdisciplinary approach, to think also involving, engaging industries into your research and teach, so that you can really do something practical and help the society and the country in development of our resources. Because mathematics, physics, chemistry, and the related subjects produce a lot of uh, output in publications, yes. There are a lot of publications. But I think we need to go move now towards industrial industry and academia linkages, not by name, but actually doing it. For that, we need to invite industrialists in such conferences to come and see how the leathers, the technology is working, and how you can have work together with your students to develop some technology in Pakistan based on your teaching. So you shouldn't always be dependent importing technology abroad. I think this is a, you have such a long history of 100 years, a very modern college, a modern university now, that you can lead this because you have led already. I know LCW is very well known in, at least in my knowledge, for international collaborations, international conferences. You distinguish basically among other institutions, there many more agreements, MOUs signed with international organizations, and you always organize international conferences. So you have a good network of international groups. So you can do a lot by putting together and linking them up with Pakistan institutions and industries so that they can really produce something meaningful out of these conferences. These are all very useful conferences, useful for students to, to learn what's happening around the world and in Pakistan. But if you go one step further, and you can do it, with a small scale start, see what you can do with industries, how you can help them produce something locally. For example, solar panels. We can produce here. I don't see any difficulty. But our industry, our businessmen are finding it easy to import it and sell it and make profit. They don't want to contribute to the Pakistan's economic growth and development, which is not possible without industrial development in Pakistan. I think we should push them to start producing certain things which are consuming a lot. Semiconductors, solar systems, computer systems, chips, computer modules. We can do a lot in producing locally. So I think my message today to this fourth conference, to the fifth conference should be inviting industrialists and businessmen together to work together with you and see what one or two sub one or two areas, one or two aspects can be developed practically and be useful to the country develop and grow. So my message to you to that this is my uh, sincere message that this work together with all sciences together, the two social sciences included, and link with industry, invite industries in your next conferences so that you can work with some meaningful projects.
Thank you very much. Hope you all enjoyed the theme and made the most of this opportunity to connect with your fellow participants and fellow researchers. Uh, now, without further ado, let's get started. As we have a number of speakers lined up, uh, but at first I would like to invite the session chair, uh, Professor Dr. Rubina Faru, former VC Government College University, Faisalabad, Munich. Co-chair, Mr. Faru Bashi. Chief Equipment Maintenance Engineer, Central Lab, Lahore College Women University, Lahore, and Commissioner Dr. Alia Khalid, Assistant Professor of Physics, Lahore College Women University. Please get us on stage. Have a warm round of applause, please. We have an esteemed speaker, Dr. Imran Altaf. Dr. Imran Altaf is an assistant professor at the University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Lahore. Today he will be sharing insights on the topic preparation of calcium conjugated antigen nanoparticles based viral vaccine and its immune stimulating effects in vivo. Let's give a warm round of applause, please. Welcome, Dr. Imran Altaf. And the disease diagnostics. I just want to give a few words to you that this topic is in fact is relevant to physical sciences as well. With the interaction of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we have learned how new drug molecules could be designed with the use of various algorithms. So uh, not only we are using physical sciences for diagnostics, we are also learning how to design molecules. So there are various techno technologies which are emerging nowadays. For example, CRISPR, CRISPR uh, editing technology, which is gene-based technology, which can be used to, which is being used to cure diseases relevant, relevant to um, genetics. Similarly, now the biopsies analysis are changed. How it is changed? Now we are using fluids to, to find out fluids and logarithms to find out the molecules, RNA, DNA, which is present in our blood to identify various kinds of cancers. So the world is moving very fast and we have to cope up with such moving, uh, fast moving technologies. So today we are very excited to have with us uh, uh, various talks. The first speaker is Professor Dr. Uh, and he is going to talk on electric spinning and emerging technologies for construct polymer based nanofibers for drug delivery. From, uh, he's from principal, and he is principal, Punjab University College of Pharmacy, University of Punjab, Lahore. Uh, welcome to you, sir. Oh, okay, so Dr. Atif, um, I think it's not here. So, uh, welcome, Professor Dr. Imran Kultaf. He's from, he's the professor from the University of uh, Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Duat, Lahore, uh, and his topic is preparation of calcium and conjugated antigen nanoparticles based viral vaccines and its immunostimulating effects in vivo. In vivo. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm very happy. May, uh, I would uh, like to prefer to deliver my lecture in uh, Urdu uh, in spite of English. Most of you will be seeing me around. The professor lectures are even if you can show that all are going to happen. But being in Jawaat, in Jawaat, we believe in two things. One, Ilam Amr ke baya naam ka mala. वो इलम जिससे कि हम बेनिफिट नहीं दे सकते वो यूज लेते हैं और नंबर टू इलम जो है 
is the name of thinking. मैं वो से कहता हूँ आपको कि scientist निकला है science से। अगर आप देखें तो scientist, scientist, तो science का मतलब है सोचना। हम जब सोचते हैं तो हम बहुत सारी चीजें हमें ब्रोड होती हैं। अब जो टॉपिक, the current topic on which I will give my lecture uh, is known to a uh, problem which we face in our life path. And this is life, not only life, like, but also in the human being actually. I am a vaccinologist and uh, I am also the Pakistan registered uh, production manager of uh, only registered uh, unit in the government sector, uh, training center for the biology products and unit for cooking. So uh, I will prefer uh, to focus on, uh, try to focus on my uh, objectives. Uh, what I call a perspective of what I am saying, Professor Kafir Kham motivation is what I am doing. I have to motivate my students. They, they, they can do anything. Nothing is impossible in this world. You see, when a professor gives a lecture, he doesn't have to go back to him. आप मुझे डिलीवर करो, मुझे आगे ड्राइव करो, मुझे पिक्सिंग करो आगे। तो हैर आई इधर पढ़ते रहेंगे, लेकिन मैं आपको बताता हूँ किस तरह हम अपने युवाज के अंदर अपने नागरिक को टारगेटेड करते हैं टू साल का प्रॉब्लम हो तो इंडस्ट्री। माय पहले नर्स की जो लेसन थी इन द प्रेजेंटेटिव डिजीज़ व According to the Islamic Survey of Pakistan, uh, in every year, Pakistan suffered 6 billion rupees losses in the livestock. And we should uh, know here that in the livestock, you mostly load the daily, which is the most important thing, and you can rely on the animals, not the meat. So, animals are land, and they are not the same thing. If they are the animals, they are the same thing. So that's why they believe that if you go to the house and see that if one of the animals is sick, then they have to eat for two days for two days. They have to eat for two days. They have to see suffering. So the people have preferred to spend their money on their animals, not their own health. Because they know that they have to eat for their animals. That's why they have to think about what they have to do. Being a veterinarian, we visit the team. And we know what the suffering of all farmers in our village. So, it is a viral disease which is caused by the coronavirus. The coronavirus is the same virus which caused corona in human beings. Corona also belongs to the coronavirus. And what is the problem which I was given, which the LND lifestyle development was given to me to solve? The issue was that. Uh, we have two types of vaccines, either IL-based and other gel-based. In both types of vaccines, protein is going to be degraded. And uh, the principle of the vaccinology is that we have to delay the release of antigen in our body. We have to delay the release of antigen in our body. We have to delay the release of antigen so that it slowly and steadily release. And when it slowly and steadily release, we have to boost the release. कभी आपने सोचा कि पोलियो वैक्सीन के हम बूस्टर में बूस्टर दे के आ रहे हैं? We never think. We are scientists. Then why don't we think कि why हम दो महीने के बाद हम पोलियो के बूस्टर देते हैं? वो इसलिए देते हैं कि पोलियो के बूस्टर को दूध नहीं है. Principally, practically पोलियो को बूस्टर की दूध नहीं है, क्योंकि पोलियो एक लाइव वैक्सीन और वो वायरस बॉडी तो बचा रह जाता है दो महीने के बाद कोई नींद बच होती है वहां पर वो पैच रह जाता है अगर वो पैच रह जाएगा और वहां पर डिजीज आ जाए तो वो डिजीज जो है वहां से वायरस स्प्रेड करेगा तो वैक्सीनेटेड बच्चों के लिए भी वो स्प्रेड करता है तो दैट्स वाई वी रिपीट दिस वैक्सीन अगेन एंड अगेन एंड अगेन अदरवाइज क्रिटिकली वाइस टू इंजेक्ट द वैक्सीन यू डोंट नीड टू इंजेक्ट इट बूस्टर अगेन एंड अगेन तो हमें यहां पर वैक्सीन के ट्विस्ट पर जो समझना है that we have to delay the release of antigen in our body. For that purpose, we have two types of conventional vaccines. One is IL-based and other is the iron-based. Iron-based means aluminum hydroxide gel or IL-based 
ह्यूमन बींग के अंदर जो इंफ्लुएंस ऑफ वैक्सीन है बच्चों में लगती है वो आयल बेस है तो इस तरह जो आप वैक्सीन लगाते हैं टाइफाइड की वो जेल बेस है एनिमल के अंदर जो आयल बेस है वो जेल बेस है तो हमें ये इशू था कि वो इंटीजन डिगेड हो रही थी बॉडी में जाके इंजाइन है वो डिगेड करते हैं तो आई हैव गिवन ए टास्क एल एंड डी गिवन ए टास्क टू सॉल्व दिस इशू आई वर्क ऑन दैट एंड अल्टीमेटली जो हमने साफ किया इसको कि वी शूड अटैच ओवर इंटीजन विद ए नैनो पार्टिकल ऑफ कैल्शियम फास्टेट कैल्शियम फास्टेट के इंटीजन को अपने इंटीजन को कैल्शियम फास्टेट के साथ उसके नैनो पार्टिकल को उसको बाइंड किया जाए जब बाइंड किया जाएगा तो ये बाइंडिंग इतनी जरूर होती है कि उसकी डिजेल जो है वो स्लो तो होती है लेकिन बॉडी में जो इंजाइनेटिक डिजेलेशन होती है इंजाइन वो ग्रेट वो स्लो डाउन हो जाती है तो इंटीजन डिस्ट्रॉय नहीं होती इंटीजन डिस्ट्रॉय नहीं होती जबकि आयल बेस में और अलम बेस में इंटीजन की बॉडी में डिजुलेशन होती है तो दिस इज ओवर इशू एंड आई हैव सॉल्व शुक्र अलहमदुल्लाई सक्सेसफुली एंड आई हैव गोट ए लेटर ऑफ अप्रिसिएशन फॉर द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पंजाब हाइपोसिस आई सेट हाइपोसिस ऑन दैट The calcium conjugated nanoparticle conjugated intrusion provides efficient delivery system to provoke the high and long term immunity. Here, but most of them are biologists and maybe physical sciences. The vaccine the immunity of two types of vaccine. One is cellular immunity, and the other is the homogeneous immunity. Our data stress is that is cellular immunity. We want to stimulate the cellular immunity because cellular immunity. वास लॉन्ग लास्टिंग होता है वहां पर हमारे मेमरी सेल बनते हैं जब बूस्टिंग हम बार बार देते हैं उसका मकसद यही होता है कि हम वो बार बार बूस्टिंग देने से टी सेल्स को स्टिमुलेट करते हैं टी सेल को स्टिमुलेट करते हैं ताकि टी मेमरी सेल बने एक शार्ट लगाने से फील्ड वैक्सीन का टी सेल स्टिमुलेट नहीं होते हम उसको बार बार टी सेल को स्टिमुलेट करने के लिए देते हैं और अल्टीमेटली क्या होता है अगर हम यही क्या करें कैल्शियम के साथ बाइंड जो वाले इंटीजन को और ये बाइंडिंग जो है वो छह मिनट तक बॉडी के अंदर रहे तो वहां से इतनी स्लोली रिलीज होता है कि हमें बूस्टिंग की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी और वही जो स्लोली रिलीज हो रहा है वो खुद ही बूस्टिंग करे और विदाउट द डिस इंटीग्रेशन और डिग्रेशन ऑफ द इंटीजन कैसे फास्टर मालिक जिसका इंट्रोडक्शन जिसे नॉन टॉक्सिंग एंड बॉडी एडेबल ये हो जिसका Philosophical point of view for the antigens is the uh, immunity is going to be boosted by the antigen. There are two types of immunity: one is the cellular immunity, and the other is moral immunity. We will mostly stress on the cellular immunity. I will very briefly describe in that. Otherwise, this will take almost two years for me to complete. So, mostly stress on the cellular immunity because we have to stimulate the T-memory cell. Thank you very much. 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 methodology i am a third in cell culture and my most of the work is on uh, virus isolation cell culture i also work on the anti cancer activity of the different nanoparticles in collaboration with the malaysian university um, i think prefer uh, my students i always prefer to my students to detect that tumor from the body to take the back tumor from the body and Get the cell line from that tumor and check your nanoparticle antiparticle on that tumor in spite of cell line. Cell line means there are mostly cancer cell line, but we have to work on the actual ground. So, we need actual ground to work on. It is very important that tumor body is in it. We need to work on the tumor to work on it. So, we need to know if the tumor is effective or not. And nanoparticle cell is also important. इट इज इज ए अफेक्टिव ड्रग सिस्टम वो इसलिए होता है कि नैनो पार्टिकल जो सेल्स के पोरीज होते हैं वहां से विदाउट एनी हिंडल्स गुजर जाते हैं जब हम इंटीजन को लगाते हैं बॉडी के अंदर या किसी ड्रग को नैनो पार्टिकल को कोट करते हैं तो हमें कम कंसेंट्रेशन पर हाई एम आई सी मिल जाती है हम कम कंसेंट्रेशन एंटी कैंसर में प्रॉब्लम क्या है एंटी कैंसर का इशू यह है कि उसके टॉक्सिक इफेक्ट हो सकते हैं बॉडी के ऊपर ना अनवांटेड इफेक्ट बहुत सारे हैं उसको दूर करने के लिए साइंटिस्ट क्या कर रहे हैं नैनो पार्टिकल के ऊपर कैंसर एक्टिविटी को लोड कर रहे हैं कैंसर डस्ट को लोड कर रहे हैं जब कैंसर डस्ट लोड होती है तो वो कम कंसेंट्रेशन पर सेल के अंदर जाती है जो कैंसर सेल जो होता है वो डेवलप होता है कैंसर सेल्स आर नॉट 
drugs are not only toxic for cancer, but also for normal cells too. Because they have to stop replication of cells. But the cancer cells are in one hand. If I say that the cells are in one hand, then the normal cells are in one hand. So, the cells are in one hand, the drugs are in one hand. When the drugs are in one hand, the drugs are in one hand. That's why, when we do chemotherapy, we do chemotherapy, when we do chemotherapy, we do mostly chemotherapy, that the tumor is damaged. The tumor is damaged. So, the tumor is damaged, but the tumor is damaged. But the tumor is damaged, and 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 the tumor is damaged. So, the same class is used here, that we, first of all, I have my virus, I propagate on the cell culture, DHK 21 cell line, baby hamster kidney cell line, this is a particular cell line, on that wire, on that, I propagate, because virus cannot be propagated in the organ media, it needs some host system, some cell. So, I use this cell in my lab, and I am very proud to tell you that in in Javas, we have the first DSL-3 lab in of Pakistan. We have three types of lab, DSL-1 lab, DSL-2 lab, and DSL-3 lab. In Javas, only in Javas, we have DSL-3 lab. In which we work on genotics, we have almost done more lakh, like five lakh tests of the corona. And uh, now we are working on a TV, along with some visual virus. And uh, in Pakistan campus, uh, we have a commercial unit where we have uh, three conductive DSL-3 labs in which we fill our uh, vaccine under aseptic or under decontaminated area. So it's very, and this uh, building was uh, funded by the government of Punjab by 400 million rupees. And I'm really proud that I am the policy manager and in charge of that particular uh, building. After uh, propagation, uh, I confirm my virus by ELISA. And then uh, I perform with biological titration. Uh, I invite all my students who are listening to me and who directly or indirectly in contact with me to come to me and uh, this. They can work with me in any virus or the world. In any virus or the world. I invite you all because I have almost all the facilities right from the virus isolation, propagation, vaccine production, sectorization, the PCR, and real-time PCR. I have all the facilities in my lab, and if you world class lab, you can uh, call me if you want to visit my lab, either in Pasuki or in, uh, in Lahore campus. Uh, you are most welcome. So, virus uh, isolation means how much virus is present in one ml of media. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would uh, like to request our Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. Shubhita Lal, to uh, distribute the shields to the participants of the, the current uh, the session. And also, I would like to request our guest of honor and chief guest to accompany her. Now I would like to present our, a token of appreciation for our guest of honor, Dr. Rafika Khalid. <laughs> 